Throughout middle and high school, I was never considered one of the popular people, but I got along with almost everyone. I would smile and talk to those who were shy and didn't have as many friends because I used to get bullied quite often and knew how it felt to be an outcast. One day of the summer of freshman year, I received an Instagram DM from a guy a grade above me, who we'll call Sam. Sam had always been someone with little to no friends, had a reputation for being weird and a bit creepy, and got picked on for his looks. Like I said, I was nice and got along with almost everyone, and despite the rumors about him being weird and creepy, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I messaged him back and we began having a completely normal conversation about school and plans for the summer. I felt bad for him because of the things people would say about him, and since he wasn't making me uncomfortable, I saw no harm in talking to him. Over the next couple days, Sam and I continued messaging on Instagram and the conversation stayed normal. During one of our conversations about school, he asked what my schedule was since he was a grade ahead and could tell me whether or not my teachers were good and what to expect from the classes. The first facepalming decision I made was sending my schedule to Sam, which I would later want to smack the crap out of myself for. As summer went on, Sam and I were still messaging on Instagram when he asked for my number. I still wasn't getting any creepy or weird vibes from him, so I gave it to him. During summer, Sam and I were still messaging each other, but as the end of summer was approaching, he was beginning to annoy me. If I didn't respond to his text right away, he would message me over and over until I finally did. He began wanting to talk to me 24-7 and would act upset if I was busy and unable to talk. This only got worse once school started. Before messaging him, I would barely ever see him in the halls, but now it was like I was seeing him around everywhere. He then began to walk up to me at my locker in between classes and without asking started walking me to some of them. Sometimes he'd be waiting outside of my classroom doors when the period would end to walk me to my next class, and then other times he'd be waiting outside my classes to talk with me until the bell rang to start the period. It's important to mention that I was dating my current boyfriend at the time, and had never once asked Sam to do any of this. At the start of this, he would only walk me to a few of my classes or be waiting outside the door of some of them to talk with me. Over time, he began walking me to every single one, waiting for me outside every single door. See why I said I would want to slap the crap out of myself for giving him my schedule. I began feeling uncomfortable by this, but me being nice, I didn't want to hurt his feelings by telling him that. Second facepalming decision. I started leaving my classes early so I wouldn't have to see him or be walked to class by him. Since I started leaving classes early, he literally began to memorize the way I'd walk to my classes and would meet me at random spots in the halls. I then started to walk different ways to my classes to try to prevent seeing him. Sam ended up catching on to this, so he started leaving his classes early to wait outside my door just so he could walk me to mine. Around this time, I was even more uncomfortable and started responding to his messages less and less. I still didn't tell him to stop or that he was making me uncomfortable, and I really wish I would have just put my big girl pants on and gotten it over with. I barely ever responded to his messages as the year went on, which made me think that he would catch on to the fact that I didn't want to talk to him anymore or have him walk me to my classes. No. Eventually, I became so uncomfortable that I would have one of my friends walk me to and from every single one of my classes in the hopes that he would just leave me alone. Again, no. I figured that a normal person would see that I was with my friends and didn't want to talk to him, but... Sam just never took any of the hints. I got to a point where he was constantly messaging me asking why I wasn't talking to him and I began dreading going to school because I just wanted him to leave me alone. As a last resort, I stopped responding to Sam altogether and then blocked and unblocked him on Instagram since I'm private and he would no longer be able to see my profile. I also would completely ignore him when he'd walk me to my classes and only pay attention and talk to my friends. I hope the silent treatment would show him I no longer wanted anything to do with him, but again, it didn't work. He then would just trail behind me and not say a word, and just follow my friends and I to my classes, then turn around and walk away once I got there. He was creeping me out to no end, but I still didn't tell him to stop or to leave me alone. 
the middle of sophomore year, I had to have my boyfriend intervene, who messaged Sam and basically threatened him that if he didn't leave me alone that he would regret it. My boyfriend is a big guy and protective over me, so this finally got Sam off my back. The rest of the year went smoothly and I felt like I could finally breathe again. The last month of sophomore year, I got a message from a number I didn't have saved just saying hi. I asked them who it was and all they said was a friend. You guessed it, it was Sam. He kept messaging me throughout the day which just consisted of me responding sporadically and ignoring him. For the rest of this, to make sense, I have to explain my schedule. I got another text from Sam when I was in study hall asking me what class I had next period and told me that he was going to walk me to it. I had Gov, which I didn't tell him, and told him that my friend was already walking me to class and that he didn't have to. He responded with saying, That's fine, we can all walk to class together. At this point, I was fed up with being nice and blatantly said I didn't want him to walk me to class. He completely disregarded what I said and responded with, See you in the hall. Now I feel like how I felt in the beginning of the year and I'm dreading walking to class. I usually walked up the stairs right across from my study hall, down that hallway, and then would make a right and stand and talk to my friend before class started. When study hall ended, I walked to class and told my friend I couldn't talk and legit ran to my Gov class. About five minutes into Gov, I got a text from Sam saying, Why were you running? My anxiety is through the roof now because I realized two things. I never told him that I had Gov as my next class, which meant that he still had my schedule memorized or kept my schedule in his phone even after we stopped speaking. And two, I never once saw him at any point while walking to Gov, and he knew I ran to class, which means he was standing and just watching me. I ended up having three guys walk me out of class and out of school because I was so anxious of seeing him and blocked him on every social media possible. Something I should have done a very long time ago, but never did because I was still just trying to be nice, which is facepalm decision number three. Sophomore year ended and Sam didn't contact me or bother me again, and I finally thought it was over. A month into summer, I get another text from Sam, which made my blood run completely cold. All it said was, You have lovely skin. I can't wait to wear it. This was the final straw for me. I was done being nice. I messaged him back and told him he was a creepy weirdo and to never contact me again. I kept his number and saved the messages in case I ever needed to go to the police to get a restraining order, but for a while I was absolutely terrified. I have no idea if he actually meant what he said or if he was just trying to get my attention so I'd respond to him, but... He got my attention. I haven't spoken to him since responding to that creepy text, but junior year we had lunch together and he death stared me every single day. He worked at my local McDonald's and whenever he was working he would stare at me and my grandma down every time we went there. He's direct messaged me several times on Instagram which I unblocked him on for more evidence in case I ever needed to go to the police. I took screenshots of the messages and... The one completely baffles me when he says he can't remember what he did to me in the past. He's messaged me on my birthday two years in a row now and I feel like it's going to continue for the next few years. If anyone is ever in this situation and someone is making you feel this uncomfortable, do not feel bad for sticking up for yourself and telling them to leave you alone. Don't make the same mistakes I did and go through something like this because you don't want to be rude or mean. Stand your ground and don't allow someone to do this to you, because it isn't okay, and no one deserves it. For some backstory, I'm an Australian female, and this event happened when I was 16 years old, and currently 19. I had this best friend, Sarah, who had a pretty crazy family the abusive toxic type. She had been kicked out of home at 15 and I had allowed her to stay at my house. Little did I know that she was kicked out for doing meth. I no longer speak to her as of three months ago but that's a story for a different time. I had let her stay over one night because she had nowhere else to stay and all was well. I remember it being a weeknight because 
We had school the next day and were going to take the bus together the next morning. We were just laying around watching a movie, doing nothing really when Sarah's face went completely white. She turns to me and says, My sister told my mom where you live. Her sister had dropped off some clothes for Sarah outside my house a few hours beforehand. I was confused as to why she was so worried due to not knowing her mom personally. I kind of brushed it off, not thinking anything of it, but Sarah was fidgety and anxious throughout the night, so much so she had notified the police. Then the doorbell rang. My mom, a sweet old lady who wouldn't hurt a fly, answered the door to, you guessed it, Sarah's mom. She smelled strongly of alcohol and stood next to her husband who did nothing but sit back and watch the next few events go by. Sarah's mom, who we'll call Amanda, starts off by asking my mom if someone by the name of Emily, which is my name, lived here. My mom obviously said no, not knowing who this person is and feeling suspicious that a drunk older woman wants to speak to a 16-year-old girl. My mom being so nice is confused when Amanda blows up out of nowhere. Bring Emily out here, I want to see her. Your daughter's harboring an addict, give her back to me. She continues to scream profanities at my mom about me. Keep in mind I have never met this woman in my life. During all of this, my sister, brother, and sister's fiancé walk up to the door and start talking back to Amanda, which probably made it worse, but I know they were just trying to defend me. I was hiding behind a wall in the hallway talking to the police throughout this because I had no idea what this woman would do to me if she saw me. I suffer from extreme anxiety in relation to confrontation, and violence and was having a panic attack to the operator. I honestly don't even remember what they were saying to me and if I was even talking to them in coherent sentences. She starts targeting my sister's fiancé. Who are you? And what are you doing with my daughter? She goes back and forth with him and targets my older siblings shouting horrible things to them as well. Both of my siblings also suffer from extreme anxiety due to childhood trauma so... My sister was having a panic attack throughout this whole scenario as well. She then goes back to my mom, this time insulting her. Where's your husband? Amanda cackles in a witch-like manner when my mom tells her she doesn't have one. Well, I can see why. Ugly you are. Ugly. She continues to insult my entire family through screams. I'm sure the last house in the court could hear her she was screaming so loud. Her screaming lasts a while. It was probably 20 minutes of her just screaming insults and asking for Sarah. It felt like hours though. My mom starts to get fed up and opens the door which had been between the two of them throughout this entire thing. Amanda grabs my mom by the throat and pushes her up against our brick wall. My brother almost immediately runs out. Get off my mom! He practically spits in her face. Her husband, who hadn't spoken a word throughout the entire thing, grabs Amanda it's not worth it, let it go. And with that, he grabs her by the arm and pulls her back into the car. Thankfully, that's all that happened that night. Mom deciding not to report her to the police. I know this doesn't sound too intense or scary, but it was honestly terrifying in the moment. Having a stranger come to your safe place and verbally assault you and attack your mom is the last thing you want to happen. This was a small event that took place last summer in my home of Staten Island. I lived in a community with a bunch of parks and a pool in the center of it all. I was going to meet a friend to smoke and take my girlfriend at the time out for lunch, so I decided to post myself on one of the park's many concrete garbage pail covers. I look at my surroundings and notice a small boy and a man old enough to be his grandpa. I felt something was wrong. I come from a family of cops, so my blue blood is kicking in. My eyes were fixed on the man. Six foot one, brown eyes, fair skin, salt and pepper hair that was thinning and a red and blue tablecloth button up shirt. My gut said watch him, so I did. The entrance to the playground was adjacent to me on the left side. The man and the child were making the right turn to come to the entrance as I lit my smoke. I noticed the distance between them. The kid didn't even acknowledge this man. This is where it hits me. The kid runs into the playground. The man keeps walking past the entrance. I broke sight to watch the kid run in. When I returned to the man, he was looking at me. 
My gut feeling gave the sense that he was a predator. As we locked eyes, he smiled the biggest grin, like a malicious child with his hand in the cookie jar. He began to make an exit out of the park, which is adjacent of me on the right side. I ran to the kid and politely asked him, Hey bud, you know that man in the red and blue shirt? The young man looks up, saying, Yeah, he told me he'd take me to the park and get me ice cream if I was good. I realized that I may have just prevented this child's abduction. I walked the kid back to his block, which was only about two minutes away. I reported it to my family and the police and spread the news about this man throughout the neighborhood like bad gossip. Since I moved away, I still remember that wide smile when predatory gaze and hope that creep hasn't taken anyone else. My name is Standa and I'm an 18-year-old student from the Czech Republic. On the 28th of December of this year, I woke up at 1pm and I already knew this day is going to be incredibly boring. I texted my friends on our group chat if they wanted to go out to have some fun and drink and smoke. The conversation went like this. Sup dudes? What's up? What are you doing? Wanna go out? I got some really nice plants. You don't even have to ask where and when. Sure, hey, I'm in two, 3 p.m. at the park. They all agreed and we went to do our stuff. I showered, had a breakfast, and packed up my stuff. Vodka and about four grams. Grabbed my keys, light up a cigarette, and went out. Since the park was about three miles from my home, I was too lazy and just waited for the bus. Bus arrived, I finished my cigarette and hopped in. I noticed that two gypsies were looking at me like they wanted to rob me. I didn't pay much attention and just ignored them. At my stop, I jumped out and went where we were going to meet up with my friends. Maybe after 200 meters, I noticed that they were right behind me. I said in my head, wait, they're not actually going to rob me or do they? I started to get a little nervous, so I texted to Martin. Hey man, some gypsies are following me. What? Are you sure? Yeah, they're on me since my bus stop. Just go to the park, we'll wait here for you. Okay, I said to myself and turned around. They were much closer now, about four meters behind. I started getting scared. After maybe two minutes, I felt a hand on my shoulder and somebody say, Don't turn around or I'm going to shoot you. I was like, What? Shoot me? I immediately ran away. They began chasing me. I ran through bushes, fences, and literally everything to lose them. I think I even ruined someone's flower garden. After maybe five minutes of running away, I heard gunshots being fired. They were flying bullets near my head. The real adrenaline pumped in and I started running even faster and faster than before. I made it to our meetup spot and they were looking at me like, what is your problem, dude? I told them that they were following me and firing at me. Right as I told them this, I heard behind me, don't move. I turned around and saw the two gypsies. What do you want? Your wallets and your phone, now. Alex and David started giving their stuff and then Martin spoke. Do screw off, I'm not giving you my wallet. What did you say? Your wallet. Just give them your freaking wallet, man. No, I'm not giving you my wallet. Gunshot. He shoots Martin in his leg. While Martin was screaming in pain, he pointed the gun at us and I knew I had to do something. I pretended to give them my wallet and phone. When the one gypsy without a gun came near me, I hit him in the face as hard as I could and threw my stuff at the shooter's face. I immediately jumped at him and tried to grab his gun. Gunshot. I didn't even care if he shoots me or not, I just began to beat the crap out of him. When I was finished, I grabbed the gun and turned around to the second gypsy. David started screaming. Dude, you got shot! I was like, what is he talking about? Then I saw it. They made contact. The bullet was just under my armpit and thankfully it was only a scratch but a deep one. I pointed at the second gypsy and told them to call the cops and an ambulance. When the cops arrived, they saw me with a gun pointing at the two gypsies. The officer screamed out for me to stop. I told him it's okay that I was just waiting for him to arrest them and 
Unfortunately, I myself was tackled in the process. Long story short, the gypsies got arrested, Martin is still in the hospital, and I only required a few stitches. I'm still angry that nobody called the cops after they heard the initial gunshots. They probably thought it was just fireworks, I guess. It's that time of the year. This story includes me, Mike, and my girlfriend Kayla. We are 19-year-old students from Europe. We've been together for two years and this story happened the day when we had our second anniversary. My girlfriend always wanted something special to do instead of going to dinner. As I planned, I know, boring. She wanted to go camping somewhere. Her parents love camping and everything about it, so she got it from them, I guess. The day before our anniversary trip, we got everything we needed. Tent, blankets, not sleeping bags, pillows, food, and basic survival things. My stepdad loaned me his pickup truck that he loves so much and calls her Jenny. I have no idea why he named his car and I never asked so. I put my things in the car, including my 1911 which I got from my grandfather, and drove to my girlfriend's house. When I arrived, she did the same thing. Gave hugs to her parents and we were on our way. We drove like 7 kilometers behind her town to the nearest forest. I parked my car somewhere safe and we went hiking for about one and a half kilometers into the forest. I found a great place with an old campfire so we decided to put our tent there. We put our things in the ground and started collecting wood for fire. After maybe 20 minutes we collected enough wood for the night. We had a great night, talking about stuff, relaxing near the fire and looking at the stars. After 11pm we went to the tent. We were kissing and getting intimate and after 1am we decided to call it a night. Here comes the scary part. Kayla wakes me up. First thing I noticed was her scared face so I asked her in my sleepy voice, What's wrong? She didn't say anything and pointed outside. I was listening and heard nothing but when I wanted to say anything I heard giggling. I felt goosebumps all over my body and immediately took my gun out and just waited. After maybe 30 seconds I heard cracking sounds right behind her tent. Kayla grabbed my arm as hard as she could and almost started crying. I told her quietly that everything will be okay. After I said that, I heard someone saying in the scariest voice that I've ever heard in my life, Do you really think that? My heart dropped out of my body and I said loudly, What? Who is that? It was quiet for maybe two minutes and after it they said, I'm going to kill you both. And immediately stabbed me in the back through the tent. Kayla started screaming so loud that my ears were ripping off. After that, he went to the entrance of the tent and tried to open it. He opened it halfway, and before he opened it full, I fired at least three shots. I heard him screaming in pain and began to run away as the sound dissipated. We put on some clothes, and I told Kayla to run to our car as fast as possible. When we sprinted out of the tent, Kayla started screaming again. I pointed my gun and a flashlight to where she was looking, and I swear to God there were three men. One of them, the one I hit, and two others who were looking at me dead in the eyes. It took a second for me and I noticed that one had a knife and the other had an axe. They didn't care that I had a gun and charged at us. I fired two gunshots at one and screamed at Kayla to run. We ran so fast that we were at my car in about five minutes. We hopped in the car and I started the engine. As soon as I started my car, I saw the one guy swing his axe into the hood of my dad's pickup. I immediately drove away, still with the axe in the hood. Kayla was crying. I drove to the nearest police station. When we arrived, before I left the car, I collapsed due to the blood that I had started to lose. I woke up later in the hospital with Kayla, both our parents and two police officers. They told me I was unconscious for little over 10 hours. They already questioned Kayla about what happened and she told them everything. One police officer told me that they had found two of them hiding in the forest and the other one was laying dead near our tent, from the two gunshot wounds to the chest. After both officers went away, Kayla's parents thanked me so much for keeping their daughter safe. A few days later I finally got home, with a new scar on the bottom right of my back pretty close to my kidney. The doctor said I was lucky. 
I can't imagine what would have happened to Kayla if she didn't wake me up that night. So yeah, that's my story, and I hope no further anniversaries involve camping. Ever since I was 7 or 8 years old, I have had encounters with the paranormal. I'm 21 now and the activity hasn't stopped. Something that makes this a bit strange is that I've moved 6 times since I first started having these encounters, so it's not simply a haunted location. Am I just sensitive or has something been following me for the past 13 years? I'm not sure. While I have many stories from my childhood, I wanted to talk about schnookums. Yes, I named whatever is haunting me Schnookums. I figured this would help me be a less afraid of it, but it hasn't quite worked out so well. Schnookums stepped into the picture after my fiancé and I moved into our current apartment in the summer of 2017. I should note that we are not in an apartment complex, but in a small above-garage apartment attached to my landlord's home. Shortly after moving in, my fiancé found a job nearby. He typically works from 11am to 9pm, so... When I'm not in school or at work, I'm usually home alone. Once I started spending more time alone at the apartment, strange things began to happen. It started one afternoon last fall. I was in bed reading, waiting to pick up my fiancé from work, and all of a sudden I could hear my dishes being thrown around my sink, almost like someone was violently swirling their arm around trying to stir my dishes, if that makes sense. I was scared, but I needed to go investigate. Not a dish was broken nor out of place. Also important to note that my landlords weren't home, so they couldn't have been making the noise either. Thoroughly freaked out, I ran back to bed. On another day, reading and waiting like before, I heard what sounded like someone jumping and landing on my living room's wooden floor in bare feet, and walking in almost slapping steps over onto the tile floor of my kitchen and stopping abruptly by the sink. I could see nobody there. I freaked and did what any strong independent woman would do. I called my mom. She told me to go buy crosses to hang up on my wall, so I did, and that did zilch. For the longest time, I was the only one who was experiencing anything inside the apartment. I constantly feel watched, and not that feeling of some random creep staring at you on the bus or something, but like someone with violent and dark intentions was eyeing me like prey. It makes me feel the kind of fear that makes my entire body run cold. Aside from that, I would occasionally have my hair pulled or hear breathing behind me, things like that, and always when I was home alone. I was frustrated because my fiancé didn't really believe what was going on, although he did admit to me later on that he feels watched sometimes as well. What finally got him to believe was when his brother, D, stayed with us for a couple of days this past June. Our apartment only had one bedroom, so when D came over he had to sleep in the living room on our futon. By the time I picked him up from the airport and got him settled in, it was really late, so he slept almost immediately. The next morning, I got up early and went out to the kitchen to grab a glass of water, and to my surprise, Dee was already awake. I said good morning and asked him if he slept okay. Then he told me that he felt like someone was watching him all night, and that when he turned the lights off and went to bed, it sounded like someone walked up right behind him and snapped their fingers in front of his face but nobody was there in the room with him. When my fiancé heard that, I think that's when he finally started to take this schnookums thing a little more seriously. I'm going to cut this story short since I've already typed so much, but there are two other things I'd like to include before I finish. One, I'm now starting to see white orbs in and around my bathroom semi-regularly, and two, I guess it might be important to mention that I live across the street from a cemetery, I also lived beside a cemetery when I first started having experiences in that house 13 years ago. My name is Savannah. I am 21. I was 8 years old when this happened to me. I am a Christian, so to simply put it, I do believe in supernatural occurrences and believe there is a veil of supernatural beings that we cannot see. But sometimes, somehow, we do get to see and experience things the human eyes are not supposed to see. On this day, it was any regular day. I went to school, came home, did my homework, and played in my room for a while. 
I had my dinner and before too long it was getting late and it was time for bed. I took a shower, brushed my teeth and hopped into bed. My mom tucked me into bed up to my cheeks and soon I was asleep. Sometime in the middle of the night I had to use the bathroom so I rubbed my eyes, stretched and got out of bed. I walked out of the room and immediately noticed the light from the bathroom because my mom always kept it on at night for me. It was bright even though I had not looked up yet. What happened next happened so fast but felt like time had stopped. I looked up and there was what looked like my mom. It startled me just a bit because I wasn't expecting her to be standing there. I called out to her, Mom? But she didn't reply. Instead, she gave me this big grin. She just stared at me with wide eyes with that big forced grin. It sent chills up my spine. I felt scared and didn't understand because if it was my mom, then I shouldn't be feeling this overwhelming fear. Mom? I said again, but really scared now because she was still grinning wide and now she had her arms outstretched like she was going to give me a hug. She started to glide toward me. Didn't walk, but glided. And the second she started to glide toward me, I backed up and ran into the living room. I was confused. Why was my mom trying to scare me? I was freaking out and then thought my mom had gone crazy. I was about to run out the front door if I had to, but when I looked back, she wasn't there. What was even freakier was... There lying on the couch was my mom, about seven months pregnant with my baby brother at the time. Whatever I had just seen in the hallway was not my mom because my mom had been peacefully sleeping unaware of anything that had just happened. I jumped onto the couch with her and buried my head in the covers. She was surprised and was asking me what was wrong but I was too scared to say anything. I tried to convince myself to go back into the room because she was pregnant after all and I didn't want to stress her. There was hardly any room for both of us, but I remember begging her not to make me go back into my room. I was extremely scared out of my mind. I started crying until I just fell asleep from exhaustion. The next morning on the ride to school, I got the courage to tell my mom the thing I saw, and to my surprise, she actually believed me. She was worried, but stayed calm and let me know that she was there for me and believed me, and I love my mom for that. What I think I saw was a demon or an evil spirit trying to take the form of my mother to get me to be afraid of her. I am very close to my mom, she is like my best friend, so I think it tried to take her form because it was someone I trusted so much. It was just so creepy how it looked just like her from her shoulder length hair, dark skin, her hospital uniform, and even the gap in her teeth which I remember distinctively because of that sinister smile it gave me. But every time I remember that demonic smile, it sends chills up my spine. This was definitely one of the creepiest and scariest moments of my life, just remembering how my heart dropped the moment I realized something evil had taken the shape of my beloved mother. Well, it's a feeling I never want to feel again. I don't know what its intentions were, but thank God in heaven when I turned around, it was gone. I have a situation that could possibly turn very violent soon. I figured if anyone would have helpful advice for me, it would be this group. It begins with my grandma. A few years back, she did foster care. One of the last kids she fostered, she ended up adopting. We'll call him B. He is currently 12, almost 13. He has two other siblings and is the youngest of them. They are in group homes. Their birth parents would beat his older brother with a bullwhip as he had witnessed. That is pretty much the extent we know, and his siblings are pretty messed up, to say the least. When B was first adopted, he was good. I have a brother his age, and they get along well. There was no problems. In the last year or so, although, things have taken a turn. B has one chore, as my grandma owns a farm. His chore is to feed two bales of hay to the animals. This takes maybe five minutes. He also has a gator, a sort of go-kart with a lot more power to complete his task. You cannot even explain to him the faster it's done, the faster you are done, and can do what you want. He will not do it. He lies saying he did it when he is not. It will take him eight hours. He has no empathy and is defiant and is becoming very violent and concerning. It is getting to the point where he is being like this to others, not just my grandma. 
She has punished B, taking away electronics and his beloved possessions, even gone as far as to spank him. He doesn't care. An emotionless face. He also has been going as far as to steal my grandma's phone out from under her in her sleep to use for games. He also steals remotes. Personally, I have caught B talking to himself or someone you cannot see. It is very unsettling, and he will just stare with emotionless eyes. I'm not exaggerating on any of this. It's becoming violent, and we are concerned for my grandma's safety at this point. Also, just recently, my grandma told us that he had set fire in the basement where he sleeps. They were able to put it out, and I'm not sure if it was on purpose, but at this point, with his other behavior, it's almost definite that he did. He also has been on therapy for years with no luck or help. B also was on medication for ADHD, but was taken off and seems better off in that way. My grandma does not want to send him off because she loves him as he is her son. Even at that point, we wouldn't know what steps to take. We also had a police officer talk to him. He also stayed at his house as he has a son his age, and B became almost like he is with my grandma to them. He didn't care. It didn't affect him. He came from a very bad home. Lying, manipulative, no empathy, emotionless, defiant, beginning violent, stealing, sneaky, doesn't care what happens to the animals, which sounds like a recipe for disaster. We are very concerned for my grandma's safety. This is just what I know. There could be more. Please, anyone with advice, steps to take, or a similar experience would be greatly appreciated as we don't know what steps to take. No one else fully believes the extent to which this is and also doesn't know what to do, because how can you be so terrified of a 12-year-old? When I was 8 and living in an apartment, I saw something strange one night. To give some context, I was in kindergarten and living with my parents in Middle Tennessee. At the time, I had one sibling, my sister. I should also give some context to the layout of this apartment. It was in an area with other apartment buildings surrounding it. Ours was number six. When you walked inside our apartment, you would have been immediately in the dining and living room and to the left was the kitchen. Then there was the hallway. The first door to the left in the hallway was the bathroom. Straightforward was my parents' room. At the right turn, the corner made to the left of walking down the hall was my sister's room and then straight forward from the hallway corner turn was my room. Alright, so when this event happened, it was about 1.30 at night. I woke up to go use the bathroom and walked out of my room and into my sister's to check and see if she was okay. I then walked out and into the hall and turned the corner to see this grotesque version of my sister. This creature had a torn gown on. It also had gray bumpy skin, long pointed ears, and a shark-like mouth. This thing growled like what you could imagine a demon would. I, in my eight-year-old mindset, was terrified. I turned around and ran in my parents' room crying. When I turned around, it wasn't there anymore. That's all I remember as I don't remember what happened next. But if any of you know what this thing was that I saw, please let me know. After doing a mild amount of research, I've come across this term called a doppelganger. Have any of you experienced anything like that? This happened when I was about 5 or 6 years old when I first moved to Michigan from Florida. I'm 25 years old now and I'm a male. My dad was a big hunter when I was growing up. He loved getting new bows and everything that goes with it. Please keep in mind that I was very young so I had to ask my mom about a lot of the details. My mom didn't find out until years later that my dad made this deal with the devil. He had told her one night when he was drunk and crying, but during this time my dad was having a bad hunting season. He had went about four times without getting anything, so he said out loud that if he could get a big deer, he would trade his soul, and he did end up shooting one of the biggest deers of his life. About a week after that, my dad was taking a nap on the couch after work, and my mom was sitting in the living room. We had one of those huge wraparound couches, so they were both on it. She said he woke up and just stared at the ceiling. She went to ask if he was okay, and when she saw his eyes, they were a dark yellow. 
She then yelled at him and it snapped him out of it and he had no memory of it even happening. Life went on normal for about a month after that, until one day we saw a black looking burn on our wooden door that led upstairs. It was at head level, it just kind of looked like a burn at first but that would change over the next few weeks. It started to take the shape of a demonic, twisting, smiling face with sharp looking teeth. Eventually my mom got sick of looking at it and decided to put a picture of Jesus over it, which covered it for one night. The next day, the whole thing started to grow a body with three snake heads like cobras on its chest. After that, we started sleeping upstairs and me, my mother, and father and sister slept in the living room and every time we would go by that door, we would hear our names being whispered like it was trying to get us to go upstairs like it was taunting us. At this point, my mom and dad started fighting all the time. It got really bad to the point my dad ended up cheating on my mom, which led to them splitting up. I also want to note that I had a bunny rabbit named Buster that was the sweetest rabbit ever. But when this all started, he went insane and started attacking everyone and even bit me and my dad multiple times to the point we had to put him in his own room until one day he got out and attacked our mail. After that, we had to have him put down, and it was very sad. The house got so bad that when you walked in, you could feel a dark presence in the house, and every time we saw the demon on the door, it had a different face. One day it would be smiling, and another it would have an angry face. Stuff started to move around the house. We would hear stomping from upstairs. It got so bad we had to call my uncle, who was a pastor, and him and his other two pastors came and blessed our house, and tried to get rid of the demon, which didn't work. Eventually, we just moved out of the house because we couldn't take it anymore. I know some people will wonder why my mom or dad didn't just remove the door or replace it, but my mom said that she was worried that if they did, that it would make things worse or it would just show up on another door. To this day, I don't know what became of that house, or if it's still even there, or if another family had to deal with it as well. This was a very traumatizing time in my life and it would not be my last paranormal encounter by far, but those are stories for another time. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, our Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.